a new event with a mission to showcase the best in young talent and advance gender equality in the game. The Julius Baer Challengers Chess Tour starts on April the 8th. Two chess legends taking control of two teams of young and talented players. Their job is to mentor them, coach them and get them ready for battle. Why? Because these exciting young players, handpicked by our experts, are being given a shot at the big time. The winner of each tournament will get a golden ticket to the $1.5 million Meltwater Champions Chess Tour to compete against the best in the world. It's their chance to break into the big time, but to get there, they must mobilize all of their young talent. It's Team Polgar versus Team Kramnik. Who will come out on top and will we find the next big talent in chess? Watch the Julius Baer Challengers Chess Tour live on Chess24. Hello guys, this is my banter blitz number 1007 for Chess24. So yeah, let's try to play some games. Here comes the first one. As always, I will play the premium members and I will normally play with increment. So uh, yeah, no surprises here. Sicilian. What should we play here? I guess we go... Okay, maybe we go C3. Uh, Black normally plays Knight of 6 here, I guess. No, he goes G6. Okay, then we just play D4 and I think it should be slightly better for White. Or maybe not even slightly better, maybe it's just much better. Anyway, it should be uh, it should be reasonably easy for me to play. So I just go bishop e2 in castle. Then I probably I was about to say I probably go h3 and bishop e3. But now he yeah he plays knight c6, which sort of uh, sort of invites d5, which is too tempting actually to ignore it. So if he goes knight e5, we just take, and then his bishop on g7 is bad. Yeah, I think during the previous banter blitz, I said uh, stu stupid bishop instead of uh, bad bishop, and then people went crazy. Like, how can you say stupid bishop anyway? A sort of like, yeah, sort of like the phrase. Uh, Stupid bishop, but sometimes you can say bad bishop as well. Okay, now we go bishop e3, rook c1, and um, white is comfortably a bit better, I believe. I don't even know. Yeah, he goes b6, which, uh, um, yeah, which kind of invites knight d4 followed by knight c6. I don't know if we need to do it. Straight away, maybe we just go rook c1 first, which is never a mistake, and then we go knight d4. And try to bring the knight to c6. Yeah, anyway, it's reasonably comfortable to play with an increment and uh, with such a pleasant advantage. Okay, he goes knight c5, attacking uh, e4. 
So what are the options here? We could just ignore it and go knight c6, sacrificing the pawn. Uh, we could also do something else like bishop f3. Okay, I kind of like sacrificing pawn, so let's go knight c6. He's not forced to take. I mean, he's not exactly forced to take, but on queen d7, probably runs into bishop b5 or uh, maybe e5 even. So what I expect him to do is bishop takes c6, d takes c6, and then some knight takes c4, which still kind of looks bad to me. Yeah, so I'll remove knight takes c4. Just in case. Yeah, that doesn't help as he plays rook c8. And now, now we probably need to be a little bit smart. So we can just play bishop f3, kind of protecting the pawn as rook takes a 6 runs into e5 then. We can also play b4 simply. Then knight takes c4, takes, takes, queen c2, knight c3. Okay, let's just play bishop f3, I kind of like it. So basically there is no rook takes c6, and otherwise we just uh, just want to play b4, b5 to protect the pawn. So this kind of looks, looks very good for white. Plays e6, okay, still no threats. Okay, the plan was to go b4, so why not to go b4 here? I think knight a6 is forced. Yeah. And now we have many moves, like win a4 is an option. Knight b5 is also reasonable. Okay, let's play queen a4 and uh, capture e7. Knight b8, so he's attacking uh, the c6 pawn again. We could just play b5 here simply. I also like e5. Okay, let's go e5, it feels nice short too. To open up the diagonal for the bishop. So he probably probably has to take rook f to d1 and then something like queen e7 maybe. But all in all it still looks uh, still looks very nice for white. Still, I must admit, it's not exactly over yet. I mean, it's probably much better, but it's not... It's not exactly resigns. So knight b5 runs into e4, there is no way to... to sort of win it, win it quickly, so we have to be... We have to be patient. Now I go g4, which I think is a useful move in general. So it's sort of a loft. And now maybe, I don't know, queen b3. So in general, the way we play is uh, is something like we want to trade everything and then we, li we leave black with a um, bad knight on b8, which will never make it out of the corner. Goes f6, which should not, uh, which should not be too important as well. And now he probably blunders bishop g5. But it was quite bad anyway. It takes, takes. Still not over him. Okay, knight d6 is there. So now I'll try to, to win it in a thematic way. Like, I want to trade exactly everything. Maybe I can even play queen takes a 6 here. So th that is the point. So he's uh, 
kind of about to lose again because of this knight on b8. Yeah, so now both c7 and uh, rook a check win. Okay, let's go c7, rook f8 and bishop d8, and then we promote. So yeah, the, this knight on b8 was the key thing in this game. Still, the way I was converting uh, was not exactly was not ex exactly convincing. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, let's play this guy. I think I play him every time I can, and it's never easy. It is unrated though, so. Uh, we can even take some risk. Which makes me think of some B4 or something. Okay, let's play B4. Just for fun. I think it's considered to be barely playable. Like... Maybe with precise play, white is not even worse. Oh, he's definitely not much worse, I believe. So after c takes before, you normally just go h3, b takes, you go d4, and then it's a weird, uh, it's a weird French defense. In some lines, you can even play rook takes h3, bishop takes, bishop takes, and sacrifice in exchange as well. Yeah, d5 is supposed to be normal, I guess. So now we can take on d5 and play it simple, like bishop b5 check and so on. Or we can go e5 trying to get this uh, French, which leads to, to exactly transposition to some theory, I believe. Like if we go e5, it's uh, the position after like e4, e6, d4. No, e4, e6, knight f3, d5, e5, c5, b4, takes a3. So let's avoid this just in case. Not that ED is brilliant, but I think it's uh, kind of okay for us. So now we take and castle. And at least we know what we're doing here. So we just want to play rookie one check and then AB4, and then we probably get the pawn back. Well, bishop e7 is a little bit strange. Okay, let's play rook e1 anyway. So now we are attacking b b4. And he will probably have to give it up, actually. Like, I think he will just play knight f6. Yeah. So now we can even show off a little. We can play, like, queen e2. Uh, and then he cannot castle. Looks like good enough reason to play this actually. And he goes king of eight, but then, uh, yeah, then it will be kind of di difficult for him to finish the development, probably. Or maybe not. Well, it's sort of obvious that at least it will be easy for us to finish the development. We just go bishop b2, take on b4, go knight c3 or knight a3, and uh, yeah, there it is. We have all the pieces in play. Yeah, I think King of Eight uh, sort of justified what we were doing. I mean, I I don't think we played it really brilliantly, but I've, after King of Eight, I think it's it's White who is uh, trying to push here. Mildly put, I mean, my honest feeling is that White is just much better, to be honest. But I could overestimate this as well. So now we take and we want to play knight b5. Or we go knight d4. So which way 
Uh, which way I should play this? I probably go knight b5. So anyway, one of the knights will come to do d4 eventually. So I want it to be a3 knight because it's uh, sort of um, sort of more more important to bring um, bring a bad piece a bad piece there. So the knight on f3 is sort of decent anyway. So I want to play knight b2 d4, and this knight can jump to e5 or g5 eventually. So that's why I want uh, this a3 knight to get to d4, not f3 knight. We're also attacking a7, by the way. Not that anyone cares that much, but it's still a little bit annoying for him. Like if he ignores it completely, maybe we'll even take some bishop h3 is also in there. Okay, now we just uh, now we just go knight d4. I was about to say. Um, there is also a funny idea of rook a3 followed by rook e3, transferring the rook to, to e5, but I think we started by playing knight d4 anyway. And now we'll consider our options. So knight f5 is also a threat. It looks very bad for black, to be honest. Okay, he plays queen c7. So what's the point? After knight f5, he probably wants some rook e8, which is bad because of bishop takes f6. For some reason, I just want to win it in a schematic way. So I want to bring all the pieces. I want to bring the rook to e3 as well. And then we'll try to do something. OK, rook e3. Knight e4, so now we bring the knight to f5, I believe. He probably wants to take on d3, mm -hmm. but then uh, to take on c2, but then even d3 wins, probably. Um, or we just go d3 now, which is also okay. Let's play d3. So there is now knight c3, I believe, as we just take and uh, take on e7. So therefore, he goes knight g4. Once again, we have many moves. We can just take on e4. We can also play knight f5. Okay, let's just play it simple. Let's just take and take here. And yeah, bishop b4. So now, now we probably have something ambitious like knight f5, maybe. Rook takes e4. Yeah, I guess we can take on g7. So after king e8, we we can even take on e4, which leads to a mess. Or we take on h8, which is pretty much the same. OK, let's take this way, probably. Yeah, takes, takes. Now we have a lot of stuff for the, for the queen, right? So how much is it? We have like a rook and uh, Two pieces, and now we go bishop e7, uh, which will probably bring us more stuff. So he wants to play uh, queen b1 check. Very tricky by him. OK, now we just capture. Yeah, I'll actually have to st stop the, the pawn somehow. Now it actually becomes messy. Yeah, this was not exactly, uh, yeah, exactly convincing by me, I must say. Okay, now we take here. And probably, okay, we can take on before, right? Yeah, I guess we can. There is an nice c6 check. And knight e6, yeah, and we finally win. Yeah, that was my yeah, sort of like the way we played uh, in the very beginning, but then. The conversion was not exactly impressive. OK. I still feel like it was uh, sort of really bad for black all the way. I don't think there was a point where he was OK. But we probably jumped to some, you know, plus, plus 1 from plus 10. Um, So now we'll play uh, 
Okay, let's play this game. One d4. Okay, knight f6 is never a bad idea. And now we choose something weird, I guess. Let's play b6 maybe. It is actually a bad line that is considered to be like even worse than uh, than um, than it is, and that's why people try it sometimes. So you normally think it's completely ridiculous uh, facing this, um, yeah, this knight f6 b6, and then it's not exactly ridiculous. In fact, it's just a bad line, but it kind of it's not stupid. It makes some sense. So for instance, here I think we got a brilliant version of uh, double fan kit or whatever it is. I don't know. So normally after BC, you always try to bring the knight to e5, then bishop to e6, and uh, um, yeah, to win the c4 pawn eventually. Black is also happy to trade uh, the bishops as well. Yeah, that's why they normally go e4 and then. We try to, yeah, we try to win this pawn somehow. Yeah, he goes c5. This is strange. Okay, I think we take the exchange. And now, yeah, I don't even know what is the point, to be honest. That is uh, sort of confusing. Like black is definitely much better, and uh, I'm quite sure that the, the, the sacrifice basically makes zero sense. But I don't even get what is uh, you know what is the trap. Okay, let's go d6. Maybe he had some idea after b takes c5, which I failed to to find as well, to be honest. But d6 is rock solid. It's, it should be definitely a good move. So if he captures g6 or b6, we just um, take and open the c file. He goes c6. Okay, now I guess we just take. No, I had enough of this bluff. Yeah, now at very least we can just play something like knight a5, and then uh, if he takes, we have an extra pawn and much better position in terms of static factors as well. We can also try to play queen d7, just saying we'll sort of get everything. Why not actually? Why to give up an exchange if you don't need to? The only thing I didn't want to do was d6, d5, as then white has a clear uh, positional compensation. So now he allows us to open the c file, which is obviously good news. Yeah, queen a4, we just play rook c8, I believe. There's nothing wrong with that. Also, now in terms of ideas, d5 is not that bad anymore. Okay, let's just play rook fd8, protect the queen. Some knight takes d4 isn't isn't there, but yeah, it does not yet work. Which is disappointing. Okay, then we just play it simple. We go knight a5. Once again, when you are up material, just trade everything. And then you win an ending. So now we'll just play it simple. We'll trade the knights on c4 at some point. We are happy to trade queens as well. And um, yeah, there is no compensation whatsoever. Queen a3, so now, I don't know, knight c4 is fine, bishop h6 is also kind of logical. You can also play e5. Yeah, we have many moves. Okay, let's go e5. Not that it really matters, but... In general, the only way not to waste this game is uh, to, you know, blunder heavily. Which I hope will... Uh, We'll manage to avoid. Okay, takes now. Okay, I guess we just take. 
which is not a boundary yet, I believe. So now knight d5 can be met by rook c5, I believe, and then we just, uh, yeah, then we just um, win something on the d file. So rook takes d5 is a threat. He cannot really move the knight because of rook queen takes d2. And bishop g5 runs into, runs, in, runs into what, by the way? Into rook takes d5, probably, yeah. Yeah, so now he has to take on d5, we just take and take on d8. And then we are... We're way ahead, right? We have like two... Uh, two pieces and a pawn for uh, for the rook, which is normally enough. So let's start with the luft first. Now it hurts. goes h4, now we bring the queen somewhere like d3 or d5, maybe d3. Then I want to go e4 and then I bring the knight to like c4 or e5. So he wants to play queen h check, but it's not even... No, he actually wants to play rook d1. Okay, this kind of makes some sense. Um... I mean, I still fail to get how we can really miss this. Oh. Uh, okay, we can, I don't know, we need to play something. Yeah, this is a little bit annoying, I have to admit. Like we'll have to calculate something after, uh, after d one yeah. So rook d8 is a threat. It is actually really annoying. It is not a joke anymore. Okay, let's play king g7. And there is no increment, by the way. Or there is an increment. It starts to feel important, which is kind of sad. So if you play something like rook d7, I think we give a check first, and then we go like queen c6 and queen f6. Yeah, then I try to bring the knight, but yeah, I mean, I sort of created a mess out of this. Yeah, now I bring the knight to g3 and I'm the one attacking and we checkmate. Yeah, but this was uh, really tense. I mean, tense is probably a bit too strong, but obviously you... Um, yeah, you should expect a strong player to convert this. Um, yeah, way more, uh, way more convincingly. Okay, let's play Mr. Yup, my favorite opponent in all this banter blitzing. And let's play, uh, let's play, you know, the Pirch. D4, okay, Bishop G7. D6. Yeah, this knight f3, bishop g3 system is rock solid. I don't think it's a sort of black's main problem, but it's kind of, uh, yeah, kind of safe for white as well. Can we play knight f6 here? Uh, does it, you know, does it blunder something immediately? f4, bishop d4 check, and we don't. Don't resign yet. Okay, let's try this. Normal way to play this would be bishop g7 back, obviously, and then you just go knight f6, castles, and you... Um, yeah, you develop normally. Knight f6 is a very ambitious move that I expect to be... kind of bad, but I don't see why exactly, and also... we're playing random blitz games, so why not to... why not to try to be fancy here? He goes f3. Well, this is definitely not not what I was worried about. So now we should play something like e6 or c6. I don't know what's better. Okay, let's play e6. Maybe the queen will uh, find a way to get to h4. 
1D. Okay. So now we have, you know, many, many ideas. Like I could even play H5 here. Okay, okay, let's try this H5 plan. I kind of like it. Yeah, it gives white many opportunities to, you know, blunder something. Okay, so now we probably go which four. Okay, let's try this. I mean, anything that is not a, you know, a blunder of the bishop on e5 is sort of fine. Yeah, he finally goes f4, then we play bishop d4 check, obviously. Yeah, and bishop is 3 This is logical. I guess we just take. And then we play something like e5. Yeah, e5 looks fine. So, so obviously, obviously, in terms of ideas, you want uh, capture with a piece, not d takes e5. Like f takes e5, d takes e5 would be just brilliant for white. But we have knight g4 here, and then we play knight takes e5, and then we set this beautiful blockade. And um, yeah, obviously, black is the side uh, who has uh, yeah all the comfort in the world. I would say okay takes. Now, once again, we have uh, we sort of have many ways of playing this. We can even consider castling queen side. Okay, queen e7 is not a mistake, I believe. We will need it anyway. Knight g2, yeah, now we need to make, make some decision. Maybe we go g5, g4 first. Just to prevent this knight f3 thing, and also g5, g4 looks kind of scary for white. Maybe it makes zero sense, but it kind of looks unpleasant. Okay, now I guess we take and we have a very pleasant ending. Yeah, so g4 is uh, it's probably fine. Also, maybe I, I didn't need to play g4, I don't know. Those endings are always better for black, but you never really know how to play this. I think a5 is also like uh, a standard useful move, just preventing some b4 stuff. Now that he played g3, we will probably will probably try to double on the h file, and then we create some sort of an attack uh, with two rooks only. Okay, let's play rook h6. Yeah, he goes before. That's what I meant. Probably we had to start uh, start by playing a5, but I think this b4 is not uh, dramatically dangerous for us yet. Yeah, rook h1. So this is the way he wants to he wants to react at the king side. Okay. So how do we improve this? Maybe we go b6, and then one day we go c5. And after d takes, we take with the bishop, and then we get some f5. And we try to confuse him. He takes, which is actually strange. Then, I mean, why do you need uh, rook h1 then? The reason I'm thinking here is that we have knight g6 trying to take with, uh, with a knight, but okay, rook takes h4. Looks normal. So he wants to bring the knight to g3. Now I think we definitely go knight g6. Then we bring the knight to f4. And then if it doesn't win immediately, we bring the king to e5. So he'll probably go knight g3, knight f4, king g1 or something. And then we will bring the king closer.
He starts by uh, playing king f2, which doesn't make doesn't make it really different. Okay, let's just play king f6, knight f4, king e5. We had some plan, and we don't have a reason to you know to discard it yet. Okay, knight f4, king e5. Knight to check was uh, winning immediately, by the way, but I think king e5, I mean, there is nothing wrong with uh, playing king e5. We have such a beautiful domination here. So now we probably play rook h3. And rook a3 is, uh, is an idea sometimes. Now I guess we just take on h2 and uh, sort of win, right? Yeah. Okay, he goes c5, but it's... Uh, I mean, he doesn't have a single idea, I believe. Okay, let's just take on e2, just to keep it safe. And now that there is an increment, we just win easily. Okay, g3. Takes, takes. Yeah, thanks for the game. Once again, it was not ideal uh, in uh, yeah in the conversion part, but in terms of ideas, I think we played in a, in a quite offensive way, and it even worked, which does not happen too often. Okay, let's continue playing the stars. Twenty seven hundred from Russia. Sounds scary. Okay, let's play Karokan just once. The good thing about the Karakan is that after playing one c6, you, you can actually remove d5. There is no stopping you. All right, so he plays this fashionable line with bishop d3 and um, queen c2. No, he plays it this way. Okay, let's just play c5. And then what am I supposed to do here? Is it queen c7 or just c takes d4? I think it's c takes d4 actually. So you normally need to play like a complete idiot in this lines. You just trade as much as you can. And then when it looks much better for white, it's actually almost a draw. Yeah, queen c2, you normally just go h6 or something. Castles and just play queen c7 just to to avoid running into some bishop h7, bishop c5 for uh, some different kind of a trap. Then we just go bishop e6. We sort of play it slowly. The only thing Black is really worried about here is uh, blundering some bishop takes h6. All the rest you can live with, also. White is obviously slightly better. Bishop f5 is a very good move in terms of positional ideas, so it's uh, kind of useful for white to trade the slight square bishop bishops, and it's useful for black to trade the dark square bishops. So that's why I will play bishop f4 here. It feels somewhat counterintuitive to play uh, that stupid and that uh, that solid variation in a random butter blitz game, but okay, whatever, why not? Now I think he, he actually made a mistake. I think, uh, yeah, white, white should never allow this bishop takes e3, f takes uh, a transformation of the pawn structures. Now this e3 pawn is weak and it will be weak forever or at least until we capture it. And I think it will happen quite soon. Yeah, now we just go rook e5, just double rooks. Okay. Now we can even triple if we want, like queen e7 or queen b6. Attacking e3, e4 can always, can always be made by f5. It looks very bad for, uh, for white in my opinion.
Okay, let's play rook e4. Just improving the position a little and also attacking h2, just in case. Also now I sort of prevented myself from from ever uh, playing f5. On the other hand, now we can suddenly try to checkmate him. We can play queen a5, some king b1, yeah, like this, and then we go some rook c4 and try to confuse him. Also, maybe we will not succeed. Okay, let's play queen c5 then. And just improve slowly. Yeah, rook d3, so there is no rook d1, as this 3 will be hanging, so we just start uh, start coming here. We go f5, we go g6 if needed, and then some f4 will be a threat one day. Um, yeah, this is exactly one day, no? We go f4. What's the point? Maybe rook f1 is the point. Rook f1, we probably have queen f5. Okay, whatever. Let's just play this. Is there an increment in this game, by the way? Probably not. Now we have to sort of change our strategy. If he takes, I think we go rook e3 and win, yeah? So f5 runs into takes and rook takes f1. And queen takes s3, rook takes s3, f5 runs into queen g5. Yeah, because otherwise it would be it would be okay for him. Yeah, now we just take and it is completely lost. Okay. Okay, check and then we checkmate here. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the game. Yeah, it's all the same people every single time. Okay, I, I had troubles playing this guy um, during my last Bunter Blitz session. We, we even thought it could be more on, so let's try this again. So, it, so the previous time, I, I think I started with one e four, and he played exactly, exactly Sasha's line of the Marozzi, and now he plays the uh, Benoni exactly the way Sasha likes to play it. So at least he kind of plays his op his openings as well. Okay, we go c four. Now we transpose to the Benko Gambit where. I'm supposed to be an expert, but I'm not an expert of it anymore. Yeah, the problem with this line was a thing, c takes b5, a6, b6, and it's sort of uh, sort of good for white that black doesn't have this e6 stuff anymore. So he has to play like this indeed. And then we just play, you know, nice c3, e4. And for some reason, it's considered to be good for white, although I could never really get this. Like, maybe it is slightly worse, but it's definitely not a, not a big drama. Don't know why he's thinking exactly. Bishop g7 looks nice strong to me. I don't think you can find a better move here. He could be worried about bishop g7 e5, but I mean, it is not, it's not what I'm going to do anyway. He goes bishop g4, so he kind of um, he, he, he kind of thinks it's important to you know trade this bishop. Now we can come up with a funny idea of queen a4 check. Sometimes it works. The point is that after knight b or c to d7, you just go knight d2, and then you try to collect um, uh, collect a lonely lonely bishop on g4. And this way, I think it could be, I mean, it was probably in wise favor, or maybe it wasn't. Anyway, no big deal. 
Yeah, castles. Do we really need this h3 to prevent uh, bishop g4? If I go h3, he'll probably play bishop b5. He's coming from that side. If I castle, he probably goes bishop g4. I have to allow one of those. Okay, let's play castles. Yeah, he goes bishop g4 indeed, which makes sense. And now it's either e5 or something else. Uh, okay, let's try e5. But once again, I feel like I'm getting outplayed a little. And I had the, uh, had the same feeling in the, in the previous game against this guy. So the last time I think we, uh, I mean, I asked, I asked this as a chat and we checked it and we sort of came to, came to conclusions that it is not Sasha himself. But now, I mean, I start to feel worried again. Could be him as well. Takes, takes, and he probably wants, I was about to say he probably wants bishop f5, which I felt is uh, more nicer. Now I think white is better again. It's an equal number of pawns. C5 pawn is weak, E7 pawn is weak. Like it's very much about this E7 and E6. Like if he's in time to play E6, then it's kind of fine. But now E6 runs into knight C4. And uh, yeah, that's why he plays rook 8 exactly. So it's, it kind of makes sense. Now we probably develop the bishop somehow, like bishop F4 or bishop G5. Does it really matter? Okay, let's go bishop F4. Yeah, knight c7, and we'll probably go knight c4. So this is what feels natural to me, at least. So the square on c4 is uh, is very, very nice for uh, for the knight. So, I mean, it protects b2 there. After some e6, we always have knight d6. There are always some, you know, stupid jumps and such stuff. Okay, let's play rook... Uh, Wait, he probably wants to play knight b6. Okay, fine. We still go rook d1. So normally, what you do in this kind of situation, you just go rook a d1, rook f2 e1, and then you wait for some e6, and then you start calculating the lines. And they normally work for you. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing, yeah. Just rook e1. Then maybe bishop e5. So you just try to centralize as many as many of the pieces as you can and then then um, yeah. Then something happens. He goes knight h5. So he kind of he kind of claims that it's uh useful for him to trade the bishops like after bishop e5 he will take and play um uh, and play queen d6 okay maybe let's play bishop g5 attacking e7 probably attacking e7 like once we take after all the bishop f6s we'll have d6 yeah he goes here it feels almost like a blunder, but maybe it's not yet a blunder. Okay, let's make a loop first. H6, let's go back. H6 is a very important uh, little achievement for white, I believe. It will be hanging in uh, many, many lines. Okay, so he basically starts passing here. So he's not going to play six at all. So we will just improve slowly. Okay, so let's uh, play queen of three then. Takes, takes. Maybe I could actually take uh, one of seven and play rookie six there, but okay, doesn't really matter. We want to play this in a schematic way. 
Yeah, so he ends up playing e6, exactly. I think this is probably the worst version for him. I guess we can just take now. Yeah, takes, takes. Now we have all the, you know, all the ways to take here. Takes. And we have an increment, right? So this is going to be a game. It's not that I'm going to flog him here. Okay. I guess we just take a6. At least it feels normal to me. Goes g5. Maybe we just go rook c6 attacking the pawn. Yeah, it looks lost for black. I mean, completely lost. He is obviously lost, but now he he's also about to lose c5. Yeah, so he resigns. Thanks for the game. Once again, I must say the, this guy is really. I mean, I wouldn't say tricky, but he is really really smart. I mean, it's kind of obvious that um, that he is quite a strong player. So now we play Alexander Rosum. Russian Grandmaster, and it is unrated, which is safe. Okay, knight f3, knight f6, what do we play here? Maybe d4, e6, okay, let's try bishop g5. Magnus style, c5. Yeah, I think d5 is possible here. Or maybe not, but I think it is. He goes d6 quickly, wow. This is strange. Okay, can I play knight c3 or something? Or c4? Or e4? I mean, something. Okay, knight c3 looks normal. And uh, e4 looks normal as well. I mean, it allows knight takes d5, but I'm fine with it somehow. Maybe I should not be fine with it, actually. But yeah, I guess I'm fine. I just go ed, then I have bishop b5 checks and d takes e6, and he goes for it. I think it's a mistake. That is my bet. Okay, I guess we can just call this. We just take go bishop b5 check. I guess he will play king of eight. Yeah, so now at very least we can take on a six, on um, e six, take on g five, and play, play queen takes d six check there. At very least, I mean, I feel like we we could actually have a a better idea here. What do we think about the tending in the end? By the way, is it better for us? It could be better. So we'll cast along and then we're in time to play 95 check, yeah? Okay, let's try this. At least it's sort of rock solid for white, obviously. So we just take, take, he plays queen e7. And we probably... Is there a difference? I mean, it should not be a mistake to castle. So he takes on d6. Then we take king is seven and we start sinking there. Yeah, now I feel like it kind of it kind of makes sense to remove the rook from the six. So rook rook h to d1 probably leads nowhere. He'll just play a six. Bishop e2, knight c6, and then knight d4 is coming, which is a bit unpleasant. And we will not really, we will not really have a chance to ignore it. So that's why we have to remove the rook right now, I guess. But the good news, the good news is that probably it's still better for white. I mean, that's how I felt at least. So after, let's say, a6, we can even consider uh, 
playing rook e1 8x b5 9d5 check and king d6 9b6 and so on yeah he plays rook d8 that's what i was talking about in the very beginning so now we can just take on d8 play rook d1 check and 95 and that is definitely better for white the question is if we have a better move maybe we don't need a better move okay let's just play this simple okay check yeah so there is no good square like c c8 looks looks weird and then c7 and e7 both run to run into 95 check which leads to to quite a pleasant quite a pleasant ending for white i mean of course you don't lose it quickly it's black but it's uh it's definitely better for us yeah go there 95 he'll probably take go e6 i guess yeah so now my plan was to play bishop d3 and bishop f5 does it work yeah i think it does So now we'll probably win a pawn. Which should normally lead to, you know, to very big edge. So now we can even trade rooks, by the way, which is probably which is probably a good option. Or maybe not. Okay, let's try this. Doesn't really matter. At least I will not blunder a rook. That is already good news. Yeah, so can I play bishop d3 now? 9g4, f3, and then I try to try to win the knight? I probably can. Okay, f3. He goes here. Okay, then we just go g3 and it's safe. We just go king d2 and chase him away. Now I think it's just completely lost, to be honest. Yeah, now bishop c4 just wins another pawn. Or he has to, yeah, to play the pawn ending, which is completely lost as well. Yeah, he resigns. Thanks for the game. Tough one. Uh, what else is there? We have some brilliant feed the master. rated almost 2900 okay let's take this seriously then let's go e5 goes for the scotch that is unpleasant yeah okay you know uh, for, uh, forget about playing solid we go queen h4 I think this is called um, this is called the Steinis variation or something like that. I kind of like to play it. Um, yeah, in the Blitz games, but this is I think exactly what what White has to play, unfortunately. So normally your trap is you sort of want them to uh, to play knight d to b5 and then after bishop a5 you're just fine maybe even slightly better the way he played i think uh, is correct and now we are i mean it's between better for white and black is in a big trouble i think with precise play you can sort of hold it to some 0 50 or something but it's definitely not uh, not a dream position. There is always a number of ways here to to blunder a queen. Unfortunately, like if we castle, some knight f three could be just winning. Maybe it is not actually okay. And g three could be. 
On the other hand, may, uh, many things could happen, right? But I mean, it's, it's not yet over for sure. Maybe one day we will play Queen of Six back and sort of equalize. But Knight F3 is definitely the move I'm kind of worried about. Knight F3 will probably go to F6. Can also go to H5. But I feel like we go to F6. Bishop G5, we go Queen G6 and we don't don't yet resign. He plays knight d5. This I think uh, kind of makes things easier for us. Once we start trading pieces, I guess it should be should be sort of acceptable. So our problems were not related to to aesthetic factors. I mean, it was important just not to blunder blunder a queen or something else quickly. Now, if we trade all the knights, I think it's uh, kind of way safer than it was. Yeah, d6 or bishop c5 both look natural. Maybe after d6 he wants some knight b3, followed by h3. Okay, let's start with bishop c5 then, it doesn't really matter. I don't think we are scared about, you know, scared of some knight b5 or something, we should not be young. Okay, we go d6. Now I think it's kind of fine. I say kind of because it should be still slightly better for white, but this is uh, sort of slightly better that you're not uh, not excited about, I would say. Okay, bishop d7. Okay, now he's, uh, he's trying to, to win the queen again, but I don't think we can blunder it now. Also, you never know. Okay, bishop g5, we have queen g6. We do not yet resign. Okay. Let's be brave then. After f4, I think we, we also have some moves like knight c4 and rook takes c3 then. And otherwise, we'll have time to play h6 at the very least. Okay, now I'm scared of, uh, yeah, of this uh, bishop g5, so I'll play h6 just in case. Not to blunder queen. I mean, it's normally important not to blunder queen. And now we'll just wait for him to act. Maybe sometimes we go knight g6 and rook e5. The knight could jump to f4 or h4. And all of this will never happen, I'm afraid. But yeah, kind of like kind of like our position. Black is probably slightly better already. I mean, he had to be more more energetic. He had to get this f4 in somehow. Now I think it's a bit old. I mean, it's a little too late. Some f4 runs into knight c4 or knight d3 everywhere. So yeah, should be okay for us. He goes b4. This is exactly energetic, but it's probably a bit too, too late to be energetic. Or maybe it's not yet too late. Um, yeah, okay, let's play this knight g6 idea we were discussing. He goes knight c2. This is actually kind of smart, so he wants to he wants to get c5. And he sort of tries to force me to take on s3. Okay, well played, I will do it, but I don't think it's a really big achievement for uh, for white. Now we probably include a5, a3. Okay. Did not quite work. Uh, can I just take? And yeah, probably queen g5. Yeah, I don't exactly like what we're doing here, but it should be still. Kind of okay. So now g3 probably runs into knight takes h3, I was about to say. Uh, the only thing I need to figure out if we need to start with, uh, with rook takes e1. 
We can also take on g4, by the way. And then black is probably just better and it's kind of safe. Yeah, okay, let's do this. I guess we take here first. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think we go queen h4. Unless we win immediately somehow, but I don't think we can win immediately here. So we go to h4. Take. Now we play something like queen f6 maybe. Yeah, anyway, it's going to be a random time trouble battle. Okay, we probably won a pawn, but not the war. Yeah, queen b2 is there, correct. Can probably play g6. Rook h3 is not checkmate. Check, check. Now we can take on f5, I believe. Winning one more pawn. Takes, okay, we take on a5. Now he will try to checkmate somehow like queen b8 and rook h3. Now we go queen e5, I believe. Yeah, this looks good. Yeah, but this we should just win, right? Yeah. We have too many pawns, we will win this. Um, let's throw in a check just to throw him a little. And now we take and we have uh, two extra pawns. Normally I'm capable of converting such. Okay. Let's play rook d4 just to make sure we're not, we're not going to blunder here. And then we'll just bring the, the pawn slowly. Okay, he goes here. Let's try rook d4. Now we can probably play rook d3 check. Does it win? I think it should win, yeah. Yeah, takes king f4. Now we go g4 and king f3. And then we have all the tempest with the f pawn, so we'll just. So the easiest way is probably just to go g3. Takes, takes, and then with the king on f3, you always win this. I mean, it, it does not even matter if it's white or black to move. Okay, thanks for the game. That was kind of tense. Um, okay, an hour to go. All right, so let's play someone. Um, someone with a cool picture. Okay, let's play this guy. So we have a Mikhail Tal. Um, at his picture, which I think is good enough to you know to get a game against us. Then he normally goes e4, right? I mean, if you have a. I mean, if you have a photo of Tau as you picture, you, I mean, you simply must play one e4. But he doesn't play move at all. That is, that is disappointing. Okay, let's abort this one. All right. Um, Mr. Dangerous, right. I hope it is the, the, the first time we play today. I really hope so, because I always play this guy. But I'm slightly worried about um, playing him more than one time. Win C2, wow, he knows all the theory in the world. So the theory is D5 here, I believe. But the theory also says white is much better. So if you want to deviate, it's probably time. Okay, let's play G6 and d6. So now we play some, you know, really stupid version of uh, King's Indian, where he played all the normal moves and we played this b6, bishop, b7 nonsense. Maybe it is not exactly nonsense though. Maybe sometimes it kind of makes sense. 
So is it e5 or c5 now? Or maybe we just go knight c6 for the moment. Yeah, I don't know how to play this. It's a bit too bad. Okay, let's play knight c6. I don't know what's the point exactly. Mm. Still don't know what's the point. Okay, let's play this hopeless position, e5, d5, knight, e7. I mean, it's obviously much better for white, but okay, who really cares? I guess the only scenario where black would be okay would be this knight c6 to, to d4 working because of some tactics, but I don't think there was any, to be honest. All right, bishop h6. Let's say rook e8. Thanks. Now I guess we can take on d5 and go e4 now. And okay, if it's bad, it's bad, who really cares? I mean, otherwise it's definitely better for white. So he can play like knight takes d5, we take some way, e takes d5, e4, bishop b5, and then he, he wins an exchange, but I don't think we're uh, too worried about it, to be honest. So which way do we take? It feels natural to keep the knight. Don't know why. He just takes. Okay, now we are uh, definitely fine. Maybe even better. Okay, let's take with the knight. I bring the queen to f6. We are fine with the trade, I believe. Yeah. Now it's probably better for black. So, as the king is a little more active. The d5 pawn, I think, is a little bit weaker than uh, the one on d6. So it has to be a little bit unpleasant for um, for white. He plays rook hc1, fighting for the for the file, logical. Maybe we can play rook c5 here. Fighting for the file as well. And he takes on c5, which I think is a major mistake. So now both BC and DC are good for black. I kind of like DC. Yeah, now we have a perfect uh, perfect square on D6 for the knight. And then it's a beautiful blockade, and then uh, D5 is probably, is probably a bit too weak. But obviously, it's, um, I mean, it's still far from being uh, really bad for for white. I mean, it's just slightly better for us. Maybe not slightly, though. I mean, for some reason, I feel really optimistic about this one. Now, I think he's about to run into some Knights of 3 stuff. Is there an increment, by the way? Well, he has two... 224, yeah, probably. I mean, probably there is an increment. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, so now we want a pawn. And he doesn't have compensation at all, I would say. So normally, in terms of ideas, we are happy to trade rooks here, and we are not that happy to trade knights, although... I mean, it could be kind of acceptable as well. But normally, we want, what you want to do is... Uh, is to trade rooks. Okay, let's play king e6 and rook d6. Also, why? Okay, why not? Alright, so now we probably go knight before. So that's what I'm talking about. So we're happy to trade rooks. Okay, so now, I mean, this is just completely lost. We just go like king d5 c4 and there is no counterplay at all i believe okay
I mean, C4 was not exactly accurate, but it doesn't change much. I mean, anyway. Like, I give him an opportunity of playing king e4, king e5, king e6, but I mean, he will be like 10 tempos short. Okay, now I guess we can even play f5. Or I can just play a5 and start uh, start queening. Yeah, okay, let's just start queening here. And now, yeah, the problem the problem is that pretty much anything queens. Okay, let's play knight c6. Then after some knight g5, we just go b5. I think it should be good enough. Actually, maybe it is not good good enough. Maybe I misplayed this a little. Okay, so he really wants me to take uh, the second pawn. Fine, I will. Okay, I guess I will try to to avoid this um this kind of a position with a um, with a pattern Z file for white. Although I mean it should be still completely lost for him, of course. But I guess we just play it simple. So we just play for the blockade here with the knight on the seven, and we try to uh, promote this side of the board. I mean, I just don't really get how we can miss this, to be honest. Yeah, it looks completely lost to me. Okay, B3, B2. Can I just play B2? Although I can wait. Although there is nothing wrong with B2. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's play B2. Yeah, he resigns. Okay. Thanks. All right, let's play Mr. Sherlock Holmes, 1e4 for you, sir. Okay, d4. I think there was actually some um, you know, some note in the books about Sherlock Holmes that he he was reasonably good at chess, but at the same time, I don't think there was a single, uh, you know, story about him playing chess there. There could be one I could have missed it as well, but I don't think, um, I don't think there was such thing. Anyway, as a French defense is the last uh, thing I could expect from Mr. Sherlock Holmes to play. I would say some sharp Nidorf is uh, something that suits, that suits his style to me. It's funny, I have some random creature screaming uh, Feels like I don't know 100 meters away from me. The, I don't even know if it's shout or uh, an animal or something, but it's still a little bit annoying. I don't know if you can hear this, but it's. Uh... I mean, not exactly the as the track that helps, you know. I used to play with some music on, then I. I decided that it normally normally prevents me from playing well, but it's definitely, I mean, better than uh, than hearing someone screaming. So how do we play this? Maybe we go D take C5. Yeah, and then we come up with some stupid sacrifices or we just go Knight B3. Wait a second, knight b3 looks normal. Yeah, knight b3, unfortunately, it's way too good to ignore it. So my original idea was to play b4, queen takes b4, a4, followed by bishop a3. But then I realized this knight b3 is just, you know, simple and good. And unfortunately, we don't have a single reason to 
and go before instead. That is unfortunate. Okay, he plays queen b6. Now we have many moves as well. Bishop is three is uh, the most obvious one. Okay, let's play bishop is three. Let's try to play, you know, one simple game in a row. Just to check if we're capable of such thing at all. I hope we are. So now we probably take on c6 and go bishop c5, or we go bishop c5 immediately. Or we just take on d5, that is hanging as well. Okay, let's take on d5 once again. As simple as that. I'll remove queen takes d5. One of the, the most optimistic removes in my life, but okay, why not? We will not lose much because of it. Yeah, it feels like he's lost. We have an extra pawn, all the pieces in play, and we are attacking, and he has a the king in the center. He's under attack, and he's um, a pawn down. Doesn't sound like an ideal scenario to me. He goes a6, which allows d takes c6 and c takes d7 then. Yeah, but what is this mysterious creature? I mean, I start to, you know, feel nervous a little. I mean, it would be weird to, you know, to play Bantra Blitz when... Yeah, when you, when you have a murderer happening next to you, sort of. I obviously love chess, but probably, I mean, if I, if I would be given a choice, I would probably prefer to help someone to escape. Okay, maybe I go bishop g5 here. Okay, I can play anything, actually. I'm a piece up and, you know, there is no big difference. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and rook c8, rook takes d8 mate. All right, thanks. Maybe Sherlock could help me to find out what's going on. Um, in the flat next to me, but you know, I can definitely compete at chess. Let's play Luis Javier Carrero Rivera. Wow. Pronouncing that is a real challenge, shall we say. Fortunately, I do not have to do it twice. 1 e4. Okay, let's go knight c6. Let's play something fresh on d5. So now I guess you go bishop g4 and then you normally castle long and try to play this somehow. But I think it's considered to be sort of acceptable for black. I was going to play this um, during the Lindoris AB tournament, but now, I mean, it was, you know, it was a long time ago, so I don't have a single idea on what was the plan back in the days. So is it queen a5 or queen h5? Maybe it's queen h5. So now it's important that h3 does not create a threat, in fact. So he plays bishop e3. Okay, let's just, let's just develop the knight. I mean, if I don't know what the theory is, then knight f6 is logical. Knight h6 was also interesting, by the way. Okay, he plays... Um, he plays just as simple as we do. Now we probably go e5. And then after d5, we probably go e4, and we kind of pray for this to work. 
which it probably will not. I have a very bad feeling about this. So, yeah, e4 and now some queen e4 or something could be just very strong. On the other hand, sometimes it just looks much better for white than it is in fact. So now we want the knight on d3, so we probably go knight e5. Okay, if we'll manage to get this 93 check, then it will be a game. Maybe white is still better after some queen a4 or something, but it's not that obvious anymore. Okay, he takes, unfortunately, it's a check. So I cannot really ignore it and play 93. I'm forced to take. But now it's sort of unclear, so knight 3 check is coming, knight xc4 is also a little bit annoying. Knight xc4 probably runs into some queen g6. He goes h3, which is logical, but it does not create a threat. Like king d2 is probably a threat, but it's... Um, I mean, it's kind of... Yeah, there is no threat, in fact. That probably means we should play something simple like bishop c5 or... Bishop c5 I kind of like for some reason. What is this reason? I don't know. So he probably just wants to castle short. If I go knight d3 check, then he plays king d2. And then g4 is hanging, which is unpleasant. So I have to play some useful move here. It should be bishop somewhere for sure. But where does the bishop belong here? Okay, let's play bishop c5. Okay, I mean, I'm wasting too much time here. That someone is still screaming, at least, I mean. Which means it's not yet a murder. Okay, can I play bishop before here? That was my plan, at least. Like after knight takes c4, we have um, this queen g6 with a tempo at some point. So let's say if he plays bishop d2, we probably go queen g6. And then once again, it could be still still good for white, but it's a real mess then. He goes knight c3, which is kind of smart. So he's kind of trying to get everything, yeah? So he wants to castle again. And he's saying we, we will not find a way to... Uh, yeah, to fight this idea. Maybe, maybe it is correct. Okay, let's play queen h4 then. I mean, it feels like we had some, you know, good moves there. But I think I failed to find it. Yeah, now we get this weird position. I probably take on c3 first and take on c4. Now he has all kinds of moves like queen a4 or something. We'll take on s3 and once again, it's just a mess. Now he goes here, which I think is a mistake. So now it's equal number of pawns, and um, we're about to win some of them, right? So we can just take on d5, can we? He probably wants e4 there. Okay, let's play rook h2 then. Once again, we have an increment, so it's fine to... I mean, it's kind of fine to spend some time here. I mean, I'm fine with uh, trying to trying to convert some extra pawns with two two seconds left when I have an increment, so it is not a problem at all. So now, okay, in terms of ideas, I want to protect f7 and then win g4 pawn. 
Maybe I just go rook e7 or rook d7. Okay, let's go rook d7. He will probably play something like g5. Yeah. Maybe we just go knight c4 and bring the knight to d6. Where I guess it normally belongs. So it's a brilliant square. We are attacking um, we are attacking e4. We're we are also protecting f7. After knight f5, I guess we just take on f5 and we are finally some material up. Okay, e5, I guess we just take them. No? Yeah. So now the same rule. We are happy to trade rooks. We are not happy to trade knights. Okay, rook e4 is safe. I don't know what was the plan after um, some of the captures, but once again, I'm just trying to, to explain you guys it. I mean, it's much better to have a knight ending with an extra pawn than some mess with two, with two extra pawns. And then once again, you just try to tab trade everything and you just win it slowly. Okay. King, uh, I guess, e7. Okay, now we just try to, to create a pass pawn. It doesn't hurt to, to repeat once, I believe. Um, can I play knight g4? No, I'll play g6 for now. Now we repeat again. And probably go knight b8. So I need to prevent this c6 stuff. He's just jumping, but okay, we're fine with uh, moving some pawns forward there. We go h5. So we're actually improving slowly but surely. This is what I'm talking about. So once you once you set the blockade, you normally just win this by um, moving pawns forward. Okay, king g6. I don't need to to allow 96 check. I just want to win it like this. Okay, king g5. He wants to bring the the king to c7 or. Uh, Something like that, but we'll just promote sort of earlier. Yeah, okay. Finally, we won this. Thanks for the game, Mr. Luis Javier Carrero, Carrero Rivero. I don't really know how many mistakes. Was there probably more than in, in the whole game? All right, let's play this guy. I'm the real Magnus. I guess I played him like a billion of times as well. Let's go 1b3. E5 and bishop b2. And c6, okay. That, you know, that escalated quickly. Now we need to equalize. Let's play c4. After e3, it could be better for black already. So let's switch for some... English opening or whatever it is, I don't know. Bishop c5, I'm kind of happy to see that. I go just, I think I go e3. That happens in the, in the English opening quite often. You, you, you normally face this uh, setups with the bishop on c5 by playing e3 with the pawn on d2. And then this bishop is uh, like bad or stupid. You name it. I kind of like saying a stupid bishop. What's wrong with it, guys? I don't, I don't really get it. Now I probably... Like, as a simple plan is to go g3 and bishop g2. But now I can even consider playing knight g3. Okay, let's go knight g3, just not to wander some knight before as well. And now we probably go bishop e2.
which allows some nine before, but okay, it works we have d3. It also allows h5, but then we will survive this somehow. Or maybe we will not survive this, but I think we will. Like at very least we can play h4. And secondly, we have some creative ideas like d3 and e4. So now we get our castling and now we go f4. And this is one of the reasons why it's important to, to keep the pawn on d2. Like with the pawn on d3, it's way more difficult to get this f4 in as this uh, e3 pawn is weak. But with the pawn on d2, I mean, it's rock solid. You just go f4. If he takes, you just take with the rook, and then eventually your bishop on b2. Um, and gives you some ideas. He plays h6, which is strange now. I think both f5 and... Uh, and pretty much any other move are, are good enough. Ninety five is also normal. Okay, let's play ninety five first. It's very logical anyway. Like whatever happens, I need to open up the the, 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 the diagonal for the bishop. I could have played f five as well, like f five bishop h seven, then you go knight e four, and then you uh, prepare some plans with g four h four checkmating ideas there. But yeah, I wanted to. I wanted to provoke this knight before first. And then I think we'll checkmate quickly somehow, but I don't know how exactly. We have many plans, like we can play bishop c4, or bishop f3, bishop e4, followed by queen g4, or we can also play f6. I mean, we have many moves. Hmm. Okay, let's play bishop f3. I guess it's fine to, pro to uh, protect the pawn at least once. Knight d3 doesn't lead anywhere. We just go bishop c3. Okay, f6. Um, this is probably peace blunder, by the way. Maybe we can go d4 and then we go a3 and we trap the knight, no? Okay, the stakes are not that high anyway. I mean, if it doesn't work, I mean, we'll still be better. But I think it does work. So the point of this d4 inclusion is to... Yeah, is to take the d3 square away from, from the knight. Now I actually realize that I could uh, I could probably start by playing a3, knight d3, and just bishop c3, and then I try to, to to collect it on d3. But then it's less obvious. He probably goes bishop a7, and he tries to get knight c5. I mean, it's definitely much better and uh, probably winning for white, but maybe it's not exactly an extra piece. Now I think it is an extra piece. Also, in general, getting this EDD pawn structure is not that bad. I mean, even without a, even without an extra knight, sometimes you just go rook e1, rook e6, and it's a complete domination in general. Black doesn't have a single good piece. Okay, so he simply decides to give it up he wants to take on f5 i can actually even troll him a little and just play bishop e4 saying that the knight is not going to disappear and i want to protect the pawn first now it's a six okay now it's about to disappear so i'll take it and now we somehow win okay let's play b4 i think he, he's about to play d5 at some point, like we can uh, provoke it. Yeah, and then his bishop on a7 is uh, pretty much dead, I would say. Now I go bishop c2, bishop a4 to attack c6.
yeah he resigns thanks for the game uh do we have uh, some you know a real star to challenge us where is magnus or i don't know someone else okay there is some guy who is claiming that he's better than magnus Magnus would be just enough for me. You're playing someone who is even better is not what I, you know, what I was dreaming of, but okay, let's try this. English opening then. Playing safe. Who is this guy? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't want to play with someone who is that much worse than, than Magnus. That is sad. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. I bought it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Drakenmeister. Okay. Drakenmeister. Sounds nice. Let's keep be, being respectful with 1c4. Okay, now we transpose to some Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit declines and he plays the Tyrash. Wow, this escalated quickly. So what, uh, what is the move here? I mean, I want to play something off, off big, but I don't know what it could be. I think there is an f3 idea here that allows c takes d4, knight takes d4, e5. But then white has some ideas and after knight c6 I think there was some trick as well. Maybe there was no trick. But I feel like there was a trick actually. Maybe the trick was maybe bishop g5 here was a trick. Okay, maybe it was not, but let's just try bishop g5. Cd d bishop g5 was also reasonable. Then the, the pawn on d5 would be even weaker. On the other side, this uh, bishop on c8 would get more squares. Yeah, so now we probably take on d5, right? Yeah, I guess we do. Now it's normal to, to include this. So after ed, I will just switch for uh, for playing in a solid way. I will just take on e7. All right, he, he takes on d4. There will be no solid way whatsoever. Okay, I take on e7 then. Now I go e takes. And then I'm in time to play bishop b5 check, and at least I will cast on this game, I believe. Okay, d takes a 6. Looks very good for white, in my humble opinion. So bishop takes b5, we can even uh, include e takes f7, and white is a pawn up. And otherwise, I mean, f takes e6, white is just better after pretty much any legal move. Queen e4 is normal, queen e2 is also normal. So he takes on b5. All right, let's play this in a lazy way. Let's just take a pawn. We can actually play queen b3 check to capture it with the queen, by the way. All right, kind of makes sense. It also allows 95, which probably I shouldn't have allowed. But then I thought, um, yeah, 95 is way too cool move to, you know, try to prevent it really. There is no big drama there as well. We just go knight takes b5 and we're fine. Now I guess we take with the, I guess we take with the queen. I guess I made a promise to, to cast in this game. 
So now it's time to, you know, time to make sure I keep my promise. And, uh, okay, queen a4 maybe. No, I mean, anyway, it's just lost for black, so we're a pawn up and we're attacking soon. Black failed to castle. So normally we should just uh, win this easily by just playing rook a d1, rook a3, some queen in 2 94, 95 will bring all the pieces and checkmate. That's how you normally win a game. Especially in this kind of a situation. Okay, rook a to d1 is normal. Knight e4 looks normal. Attacking the queen. He's actually about to he, he's about to connect the rooks. So maybe we just go knight d6 check to force him to go to the eighth rank again, just in case. And then we somehow win, like king f8, queen c4, is resigns, queen f7 is coming, and king e6, I mean, okay. Should never work. Yeah, then we go queen c4, I thought. So queen f7 is a threat, knight, knight d5 runs into rook takes d5, so. I think we won this. Yeah. All right, thanks for the game. So is there, like it would be nice to play against the real star one of the last two games. Maybe I'll not get such a chance. I mean, I also feel like I have some uh, black holes in my memory. I mean, I feel like I can actually uh, uh, I forget whom I played like 10 minutes after the game. And people are ambitious enough to send uh, the challenges like two or three times. So one day I'll probably end up playing the same guy all night or something. All right, can I... Okay, let's play Mr. Mr. Uh, not winning at all. Is it Magnus? It's a picture? Maybe, I don't know. Magnus is winning sometimes. Okay, let's play Alekhine. Finally, 95. Uh, okay, c4 and the fork, he wants this line. He takes d6 is also kind of reasonable here. I mean, it would be nice to finally see f2, f4. I think once again, I was preparing, um, I was preparing Alekhine a little for some rapid and blitz. And I think we spent a lot of time for this uh, C4, F4 system, which is considered to be uh, probably the most dangerous one, or at least one of the most dangerous lines. And obviously, no one has ever played it against me. What happened? Why it, why it all looks bad? Maybe it's not bad. Maybe we just go G6. I mean, the only thing you really need to know here as black is that you don't need to get checkmated on F7 after some Queen F3. So you don't remove Bishop G7 or something. So first you castle and then you start uh, start playing it. It's normally a little bit better for white anyway, but it's not a disaster. I mean, for some uh, for someone maybe it is, but by my standards, it's not even close to be a disaster. Now we probably go Bishop G4 or Bishop. Where does it belong? We can actually play Knight C6, D5, Knight A5 as well. Trying to lose knight. Okay.
Maybe we will not lose the knight. He plays bishop e3. This is rock solid wall. But it kind of allows e5. And after d5, we probably. I mean, maybe we go e4. Maybe we don't. I don't really know what to expect from ourselves. Okay, then we just take only five. Now I think it's kind of fine for black. It's definitely a dream scenario by Zalikain standards. But even, you know, I mean, even just in terms of playing black, I mean, it should be just a perfect outcome of the opening, I would say. He takes, okay, I guess we'll just take only five. There is no need to trade queens yet. Actually, maybe this is not Magnus, by the way. I was trying to analyze his picture for uh, the whole game. Bishop is six. Okay, who is this guy now? I'm sort of... I mean, I sort of uh, have a side pot in this game. I need to figure out who is um, who is in the picture. Okay, c5. I don't know why I, uh, I preferred knight d5 to knight c4. But I think it's slightly better for black anyway. Also, here maybe it is not slightly better. Maybe it's just maybe it's just equal. Some bishop f3 should be okay. I mean, it should be slightly better for black if we stabilize, if we go c6, rook 8, queen c7, rook 8 to d8, then it will be kind of comfortable. And I think he's about to allow this exact thing. Okay, let's play c6. And rook 8. And queen somewhere, and then we go rook d8. I don't know what is this somewhere. Maybe h4. Let's play one ambitious move in a row. So g3 runs into queen h3, so probably, probably he has to play h3. Also, I kind of like g3, queen, queen h3, rook takes d5, sacrifice. Just trying to get some positional compensation after uh, bishop f3, but he, yeah, he finds the move I have not considered at all. So can we play bishop takes b2? Okay, probably. After bishop f2, we probably have queen f6 protecting the bishop. We also have queen e7 at very least attacking e2. After queen takes b2, rook takes e3. White is probably just lost. Not even because of the, you know, of the extra pawn for black, but because of the really weak king. So now I guess we take on f3. And the problem is that, yeah, it's black who, who, who is attacking besides being uh, a pawn up. Okay, let's just take, let's keep it simple. Take on f4. He'll probably take on b7, no. Okay, then we, I guess we capture c5. Rook d7. So he kind of plays well in this stage. So he sacrificed all the pawns for some sort of activity. And now we have to be a little bit precise. So now we need to get active as well. We we'll probably go king f8 and then rook e8. Looks normal to me. Obviously, we don't care about this b7 pawn. It's not about pawns. It's about checkmating, sort of. Yeah, now we go rook e1 and we somehow win this. Hmm. So rookie two, 
Okay, in the sync wins here, I just want to, I mean, I just want to do it in a clean way. Actually, maybe h5 is a clean way. Maybe not. So how to finish the, the game completely like rookie 2, queen g3. Yeah, okay, I don't know. Let's go with 5. I mean, it's obviously completely lost. I was just looking for some uh, like mate in 2 or something or winning a queen. So now I guess we go rook h1 and queen h2, yeah? Yeah. Thanks for the game. So I guess slowly but surely we're about to play we're about to play the last one. I guess I have I have already played this uh Sergei Rachmaninov guy today. I think it was this weird French with this before a three, right? I mean, I'm always tempted by by chance to to accept a challenge from someone, um, from someone with with an impressive rating, but then sometimes I find out that it's not the, the first time I play them uh, within one session. Okay, now we play some twenty seven hundred guy, and this guy this game is no increment, so I'll have to play fast. Okay, let's just castle, go d6, e5, okay. He goes d4, wow, this is kind of strange to me. Can we play e3 here and knight g4? I mean, okay, at least we lost the pawn quickly. That is kind of inspiring. Knight f6 or h6. Maybe we actually go to h6 just to confuse him a little. So the pin remains, there is no d takes c5. And we want to play knight f5, knight c6 to attack d4 in all the possible ways. It doesn't feel right to me, but it does not need to be right in a you know, three minutes game. He plays c3 to probably to uh, to create a threat of d takes c5, or at least he thinks it is a threat. Okay, let's just go f5. Let's try to come up with some random attack here. It takes. I guess we take with the knight. And then I want some knight h4 or something. Looks quite scary for white, I would say. And what's more important, we are ahead on the clock. Okay, he takes. Let's just play d5 maybe. Just to give him all the possible extra pawns in this game. We'll also sacrifice d5 if needed, and we'll just, you know, bring all the stuff to, to the king's side and try to checkmate. I feel like I will be in sort of a, in sort of an unusual an unusual role in this game. I will be ahead on the clock in a no no increment game. I'll pro probably sacrifice all the stuff and then I'll try to flock him being lost. All right, so what he what he plays kind of makes sense. So he wants to um, he wants to trade queens by by any cost, which is kind of reasonable, at least from the practical point of view. Still, I don't think it can be. Dangerous for black, but it's sort of a decent practical choice. Now I think we are given a free h3 pawn, but then he wants knight c4, knight d6. Okay, let's play rook d8 then. 
e4 so now we probably yeah it's not simple I like the, the way he plays this after bishop takes h3 he wants knight c4 and he has some active pieces sort of that's why I'll play bishop e6 so I just want to to keep this domination I want to trade this powerful bishop uh 93 okay i guess we just take he takes now we probably play 97 so i guess we are kind of happy to trade stuff here and there is no knight c7 because of rook takes d2 and rook takes b2 also if he takes on e7 we have rook takes d2 by the way i just realized my original idea was to take on e7 so he goes here and then we just just collect a piece He'll continue some stuff with rook d1, I guess, here or something, but objectively it should be just lost for uh, for white. Okay, rook d8, knight c6 should not be a mistake. And now I guess he doesn't have a threat, but we need to be a little bit precise. Okay, king g7. And he takes a pawn. Okay, this is kind of a relief. We will not get uh, we will not get checkmated. So it is a good start already. So now after c seven we have some uh, something. Yeah. Okay, rook h three looks normal. Repeat once. That's what they taught me. If you are ahead on the clock, I mean, it's never a bad idea to repeat once. Now we go king h6 just to run away from all the checks. Now I guess he doesn't have a single a single thread, sort of. Okay, bishop f4, then rook c2. And some bishop g3, it's almost there, yeah. He prevents checkmate. But blunders the rook. Yeah, we want this. All right, I think this was uh, the last game for today. So thank you guys for watching and uh, see you soon. I think see you in actually, what is it like two days? I think it will be the, uh, the day after uh, the, the day after tomorrow when I play uh, one more Bunter Blitz. So uh, see you soon guys and um, yeah, keep watching Chess24. A new event with a mission to showcase the best in young talent and advance gender equality in the game. The Julius Baer Challengers Chess Tour starts on April the 8th. Two chess legends taking control of two teams of young and talented players. Their job is to mentor them, coach them and get them ready for battle. Why? Because these exciting young players, handpicked by our experts, are being given a shot at the big time. The winner of each tournament will get a golden ticket to the $1.5 million Meltwater Champions Chess Tour to compete against the best in the world. It's their chance to break into the big time, but to get there, they must mobilize all of their young talent. It's Team Polgar versus Team Kramnik. Who will come out on top and will we find the next big talent in chess? Watch the Julius Baer Challengers Chess Tour live on Chess24.